of shamanic yeah, ways. I know what you and mean. ascension is so new agey. It the is whole very connotations new that you're going to kind of, you know, somehow evolve to be this high light being up in the clouds. And, and you know, you get an awful lot of spiritual snobbery. Mm. And you do round here, where, where I live, you do. You know, and it's very much like, um, well, we're living in the fifth dimension now. <laughs> you know, and you just think, ah, oh, get off it. You know, <laughs> Doesn't it, look like it from where I'm sitting. Yeah, it's just... Uh, unbelievable, really. I mean, you know, who is anyone to judge whether someone, how evolved another being is, is ridiculous. Yeah. Um, yeah, so essentially it's kind of, you know, it's mm-hmm. got too much religious connotations attached to it, Quite that true. whole kind of thing. And plus I, I actually feel, um, I had this feeling the other day um, that, and I'm getting it increasingly more and more so, and I hope to God other people are who, um, you know, who are listening if they do listen to this yeah. um, that um, you wake up and you go about your day and you still feel as if you're in a dream yeah I know and there's that dream like quality to life and I felt the other day it was almost like um, I, was, I, know, I dropped the kids off at school and everything I still hadn't seen another person yet you know apart from the kids and I, I was just about to take the dogs for a walk and I was thinking to myself I wonder if, um what would happen then, say, if I did wake up in a dream? Would anyone else be able to see me? Would I be like a ghost to them? Would I be like in another world? <laughs> Is that what it's like to die, you know? Yeah. I, I kind of got into this huge kind of, like, um, head trip. It would be a wonderful film to make, I think, that Definitely. whole concept of, like, stepping into a dream, you know. And just I mean, My granddad, he died. Um, he just didn't wake up. He went to sleep. And he just never woke up. But is life like that for my granddad? You know, yeah. there's that whole sort of concept. What is life? I mean, life is but a dream. They say that, don't they? Mm-hmm. And what is this dream? And are we all living the same dream? Exactly. And then there's um, the, the, the age old quote, which is all the world's a stage, um, which is relevant for that as well. I mean, Michael Talbot wrote The Holographic Universe. Yeah, yeah, it's a good book. So that's um, something along those levels as well. Yeah. Which obviously yeah. links into fractals and the whole um, resonance and numerology aspect and sacred geometry as well. Yeah. How it all seems to tie in and lead back to similar circles. Yeah, it does. It's, yeah, circles is the right word for it. Absolutely. Or maybe spiral even. It's that oh, yeah. kind of spiral mm-hmm. imagery that you get. Yeah, interesting. Good stuff. Well, I'd actually like to see a film whereby the character, you know, this time thing was not in the equation and that you could actually have many lifetimes going on at once. I don't know quite how you'd be able to... I suppose the nearest thing we've got to that... um, Do you remember Quantum Leap? I loved Quantum Leap. So did I. And that was (laughs) a similar... But to me, that's a similar kind of concept that, you you know, you jump in and you're living... At the, but then again, even then, it's like time. You're jumping back or forward. That's it's it, always yeah. made to kind of, you know, why why do we have to do that? Why can't we just accept that it's all happening now? That's now, it. you know, literally now is the only time. And, um, you know, I mean, it's difficult to get your head around it. But yeah. once you do, it's not that hard, really, to imagine. I mean, you know, when I, when I go to sleep and I dream and I meet people... Um, that I obviously know, but I've never seen them before. Mm-hmm. Where do I get Where do I get the images for the faces that I see in my dreams? That's right. Yeah. That's I it. mean, you know, who the hell are they? Once I looked <laughs> at my hands, and my hands weren't mine. They weren't mine. Weird. That was odd. And then I managed to find a mirror in the same dream, and my face. I couldn't. I couldn't look at my face. It wouldn't show me my face. It that's was like well, isn't it? you know many kind of people. Um, yeah, it was kind of strange, really strange. I think it makes a big difference, though, perceiving it as a present thing yeah. rather than a past thing. And, and we haven't really got the terminology yet to talk about these things. You know, we refer to them as past lives because that's what we've been kind of conditioned to talk about yeah, them as. I know what you mean. Rather than, you know, what do we call them? Uh, our other selves that's, we kind of sound a bit you know deranged and schizophrenic <laughs> talking like that you know but it's and it's quite strange how we haven't got 
we do have direct access to these other selves. Yeah. Um, for me, it's when I go to sleep. Yeah. And, and I and I know, you know. But then, in another way, what pickles my brain, and I can't actually get my head around it, is the um, the possibility that we also are um, other other. Um, other, we're living other lifetimes now in this reality. Right. That kind yeah. of does my head in, and the thought that that could be possible as well. That's a bit and of a wild one. Have no knowledge, no knowledge of that. I mean, because we have no knowledge of our other selves, do we? Our other lifetimes. So why would we have any knowledge if we were actually living? Maybe, maybe every single one of us is our other self. <laughs> that would be a bit mad. Yeah, you've definitely pickled my brain now. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, can you imagine that? <laughs> Not really, but yes. Yeah. <laughs> both, uh, both at the same time. It is a bit strange, you know. Where is the where is this self? Where does it begin and end? This I, this me. Yeah. Yeah. Who is number one? <laughs> Who I, is number one? Patrick. What's his? <laughs> Patrick McGowan. Yeah. Yeah. It was Tessarian that was talking about that, wasn't he? Yeah. Well, he yeah, because he was. Um, Referencing the fact that I've dedicated the dangerous man to Patrick McGowan, you see. Yeah. And because um, that the Prisoner series, um, I was watching that while I was writing the book, and we got the whole box set, you know, and it was great just to watch it and go over it and over it and over it because it was so <laughs> fantastic. And there's some brilliant moments and really good quotes. And uh, yeah, and I know that Michael So and um, Patrick McGowan is another one of his. Um, I don't know what you call it really. Well, he he's just really loves his work and what inspirations. He's done. Yeah, yeah, and um, same as really. I I feel the same. I do, I think just to take something, an issue like that, that's such a big issue, especially way back then. Yeah. Um, and to present it in an in a form which is creative and artistic and beautiful. I mean, you know, Port Miriam. It's just such a beautiful spot. What a strange and beautiful place to film. And yeah, the characters and the outfits with the brollies and the capes and everything. And just the whole idea of it. Um, and the way that it was filmed and the dialogue and everything. Just for it to be a creation like that um, is the best way that you can really um, connect that kind of information to people. No, that's the most beautiful way to, to express anything that you feel really is by yeah. creating things and sharing it. That's it. Mm, so that that's why I dedicated the book to him. He died as, while I was writing the book too, which was really sad. Yeah, I didn't I didn't really um, know know much about him up until the last few years. Yeah. Um, and I, I, I vaguely was aware of the prisoner. Um, and I think it was it, it's on I think it's on repeat on on Sky right now. Not the new one. No. <clears throat> oh, the new one. They've made a new version of it. I don't know yeah. about that one. I haven't seen it yet. I should really see it. But then I know that I'll have this preconceived idea that it's going to be really rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> because uh, I I don't like it when things are um, copied. I I like genuine things that are unique. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Copies are kind of a bit lame, really, aren't they? Unless you're going to do them in such a way that's kind of, you know, reinvented. But exactly. you can't reinvent the wheel, can you? Yeah. And I try to tell my kids that now. Be really careful what you put in your brain because it is such a precious thing. Our minds are so precious mm -hmm. and we don't respect them and we don't put good things into them. You know, that's not to say that, you, you know, a little bit of suspense isn't too bad now and then but it's it's hard to kind of tell until you've really seen something with you know how bad that's how it's, how it's going to affect you you know well, the, the the kids these days are i mean i've seen it just in younger friends of mine um there has to be something going on for, yeah. for them to feel normal like whether it's um watching the tv playing a computer game as well as texting on a phone at the same time yeah. You know, to, doing one thing isn't enough. Yeah. It, staying, sitting, sitting quiet is completely out of the question. Yeah. So I'll see people that say, I'm bored, I'm bored, I need something to do. I'm yeah. saying, well, have you tried doing nothing yet? Yeah. 
Because I think that's what you might be missing. It's that whole thing, though, isn't it, of being entertained. That's it. And um, the idea that you, you know, to find that from within yourself and amuse yourself with a, you know, a, my my little girl, she's great. She just um, asked me, have you got a box? And then five minutes later, have you got some scissors, sellotape, you know. <laughs> and she'll make uh, these amazing, like, guinea pig runs out of cardboard boxes. And yeah. she has great fun, you know. But a lot of kids these days, and she's the same as well, she gets like this sometimes, where she just gets frustrated and she just wants... Um, she wants stimulus. Yeah, she that's want, it. She wants it from externally, from outside herself. Mm -hmm. And really, you know, that is what we kind of, that's the dilemma, the modern dilemma we live in, is is that we expect something else to make us happy, we expect something else to um, fulfil us, whether that's a, a lover, a, you know, a, a parent, 